your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. Lighthouse International Ministries will be hosting its annual Women of Issues Conference this Friday, June 18th at the Grand Lucine Hotel Royal Palm Room, beginning at 6 p.m. under the theme, Unmask It. The event will include a number of speakers that will address issues such as mental health, women in marriage, women in ministry, and depression, just to name a few. Event host Minister Chantal Evans says this year's conference is designed to empower women while also giving them hope. We want to ensure that we're all on the same page as it concerns and as it relates our mental health and how we assist women with dealing with their issues. You know, Solomon talks about how difficult it is to really understand and comprehend a woman. And so if you are a husband, a brother, or an uncle, and we know that this weekend we're going to be celebrating Father's Day, we want everyone to come out and to be on the same page as it relates to the issues women face and how we help our women to not only conquer those issues but to thrive in the midst. At 11 a.m. on the same day, Divine Intentions Girls Mentorship Program, which is a new empowerment program for young ladies, will also be celebrating those ladies for completing the program. Coordinator of this program, Megan Nicole Adderley, explains. So on Friday at 11 a.m., we're going to have our launching ceremony, our official launch and closing ceremony for the girls who were a part of the program thus far, where they're going to be receiving their awards. We're going to be making special recognition of them and their schools. And we also have Dr. Colley. He is going to come and he's going to speak to them about depression and mental health awareness. And then we have another presenter, Felicity Gibson. She is going to be speaking to them about do not allow, on the topic, do not allow your surroundings to define you because she has um, great experience in this area and her being a recent graduate, she is able to assist them and to encourage them. Switching gears, Bahamian recording artist Major sharing new music and a little bit about her journey in the music industry. She is now living in Los Angeles, but she stopped by our Power 104.5 FM studios recently for an interview. Megan Shepard has more. Taylor Major DeVoe left Grand Bahama at the age of eight and then moved to Los Angeles in 2007. Major says she's always been interested in music, but admits it was something she had to put a lot of work into. She says that performing with a jazz band for seven years really helped her development. Well, I do sing, write, rap, all genres of music gotcha. from pop, R&B, gospel. I really want to get into some country. I ain't there yet, but... Um, I've been doing music. I don't think I was really good at it at the beginning. Yes. I don't, at all. But like You have to, you have to <laughs> you start know? somewhere. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. You know. Nobody was like, yeah, girl, you can sing. Yeah. People would just be catching me like, oh, you actually could maybe sing a little bit. Okay. But I have nerves. So I was the type of person that I would sing good and then get in front of everybody and sing horrible. Freeze up. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So um, just being able to be in the choir. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, I felt like it gave me a little bit of comfortability with stage presence. Mm -hmm. Majora says she recently overcame health challenges. And ever since then, she has dedicated herself to taking her talent more seriously. Now I just got back in the studio, actually, because I had like a little mini stroke mm -hmm. situation. Really? About a year and a half ago. And um, I ended up not being able to like talk or walk properly. Really? And I really could not sing like at all. So. Yes. I felt like, I was just telling her, I feel like the Little Mermaid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, and I feel like God took that gift because I was sleeping on it too much or whatever the situation was. And mm -hmm. I say, okay, if I can be able to record again, I don't care if it's the best, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep going and, and do it. So the past year, I've been recording and I've been doing, I got like 30 songs done in the past year. While Majora is currently signed to a label and living her dream, she says the music industry can sometimes be a dark place. So you really need to be strong-minded and you have to be spiritually ready too. Okay. You have to stay prayed up because those are the type of places where they will eat you up and spit you out so fast mm -hmm. and then you don't realize what happened. You done lost yourself, you done lost your spirituality, you done lost everything. And you're like, man, I just wanted to be in the industry. But you have to, those people, they pry on weakness mm -hmm. and they pry on um, on ignorance. Yeah. So if you don't know what you're going, what you're going into, mm -hmm. you're going to get taken advantage of. She says, thankfully, her Bahamian upbringing has helped her a great deal. Both my Grammys, they're very, you know, godly people. And mm -hmm. 
I read my first book was like a Bible story. Mm -hmm. You know, that was my first time. And I was in the Bahamas. Yes. And we, you know, we had to learn the books of the Bible and mm -hmm. all this. It's serious. So mm -hmm. I grew up like that. But that God that was instilled in me, I always have been able to carry that everywhere. So mm -hmm. I always had that like discernment to mm -hmm. be like, mm, I don't know about this person. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the right thing. You yeah. know, like maybe you should wait a little while and see what this person about. Maybe do some research, you know. Megan Shepard, Sedanax, Network News. And there's a look at, that was a look rather, at stories making news. Here's a check on sports with RJ Philippe. Good evening, I'm Jay Philippe and welcome to sports. Grand Bay is continuing to excel. This group recently returned home from international competition where they surely outdid themselves. The Nemo Athletic Track Club took a five-member team to compete at the Atlanta Georgia Relays Invitational. The team captured a number of medals in individual events and relays. Head coach Jared Forbes was pleased with his athlete's performance on the international scene. I think the kids did phenomenal. You know, there's always room for improvement, but for this event, I think they did a phenomenal job. And with, with the medals that, that they brought home, it, it clearly shows that they have been putting in the work. Nemo's Athletics, we definitely pride ourselves on traveling to international competition, you know, giving these kids the ultimate exposure and making sure that they build their portfolio on, on the international level. Seeing them compete on the circuit, on the international circuit, is one of our biggest prides and joys. So we definitely want to continue doing that, making sure that they establish their name on the international circuit. But for us right now, it's just a continuous process. Zion Shepard captured four medals. He won two gold, one silver, and one bronze. Overall, training is hard every day. Going into defense, awesome. A little nervous, but yeah, I get to it. I look forward to AU Junior Olympics. My hopes don't get injured in practice. Eris Pratt was another top performer winning four gold medals in the 200, the 4x1, the 4x4, and long jump. I was kind of nervous at first, but then when I got in the race, I was like, okay, I got this. I just was like inhaling and exhaling a lot and just taking it slow and slow. Not to be left out, Delano Roberts walked away with two medals. Overall, he competed in the 100 and 200 sprint event. He also took part in the 4x1 and 4x4 relays. It felt great, you know. Uh, it was it was good to compete and have my teammates on the side of me to win two medals. It was a relief. It felt good. Now in track and field, the NCAA Division I Outdoor Track and Field Championships wrapped up this weekend in Eugene, Oregon. Two Grand Behemoths was in action. Terrence Jones and his Texas Tech 4x1 relay team finished the season running 39.14 in the semifinals to make the finals. In the final, a missed exchange resulted in a drop baton and unfortunately a disqualification. On the women's side, Brian Bethel and the University of Houston women's track team using its second combination of sprinters in the 4x1 in two outings. The Houston women still managed to make history, scoring the Cougars' first points in the NCAA Outdoor Track and Field Championships since 2012. From the track to the softball diamond scores from the Rising Stars Girls Development Softball League on the weekend. In the senior division, the Crushers defeated the Assassins 15-5. In coach pitch, Girls Like Diamond got the win over West End Marlins 15-5. The Girls Like Diamond again came back to take down the Lady Black Eagles 7-5. That's a quick check on sports. I'm Jay Philippe. Be blessed. <laughs>